Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again with a sneak peek at a future IBM PS2 project that I will be undertaking and documenting on video for your viewing pleasure. What you are looking at right here is pretty much the finest that the IBM PS2 lineup ever had to offer before everything was discontinued in the early 1990s. This is an IBM PS2 Server 95A system. The A indicates that this system was originally shipped from the factory with an IBM hardware-based RAID array in place. Now when I got this machine, it did not have the RAID array in it any longer, but that was fine with me because the IBM hardware RAID adapters, known as the Passplay and the Cheetah, were not all that great. In particular, if you were running them in a RAID 5 array, they did not automatically update and synchronize the parity information on the parity volume. So if you had a drive drop, replacing it could be a bit of a difficult thing to do if the parity information was sufficiently far out of synchronization with the actual state of the other drives. And if you don't understand how that works, you can find a description of a RAID 5 system online to gain a better understanding. I bought this machine and one other from a gentleman in North Carolina who was selling them. Both of them have been significantly upgraded beyond even their stock components. We'll look at those upgrades here in a little bit. I won't spill the beans on them just yet. We'll see how many of you can figure out what they are. To start things off, let's talk about the original toolless case here. Everything on this machine, just about everything on this machine can be done without the requirement to go and get tools. There you can see that the two floppy drives, the Plextor CD-ROM drive, and all of the hard drives are now visible inside the machine. And that is what eventually sidelined this thing. I bought this around 2006 or 7, ran it for a while, and then the boot hard drive down here on the bottom dropped. These are IBM's earliest 7200 RPM drives, the first three are. They are the DFHS series, and while they weren't bad drives, a lot of them were used in server applications where they were on round the clock, or they were worked very hard. And these days, if you find a DFHS drive, it's probably better to pass it by because they've got a lot of hours on them and they have problems with stiction and that's what happened to this one the spindle motor torqued the heads sharply enough that it ripped them right off and then I heard them flying around inside the drive at probably not too far from 7200 RPMs this drive up here is a 15,000 RPM Fujitsu SCA drive which was put in there mainly because it was cheap and for humor value but the machine can get some added performance out of faster drives so what I'll be doing in the future, I saw a lot of drives show up on eBay for a not altogether unreasonable price. IBM DCAS or DCAS series. These drives are much more reliable over the DFHS, not quite as high performance of a drive, but cooler running, quieter, and since these were usually used in desktop computers, they oftentimes don't have the amount of wear on them. In fact, I have had very good service from every one of the IBM DCAS drives I've had. And as you can see, I was fortunate enough to happen upon a lot of them from an eBay auction for a not altogether unreasonable price. I'd say for these four drives, including the shipping, I was probably into it for around $25, $30, which wasn't too bad because I really do want to get this machine running again. This is a very nice, very usable machine, even in this modern internet age. And I'll show you why here, again, without spilling too many of the beans. Pop the side panel off. And you can have a look inside here at one of IBM's last and greatest series of machines. Let me adjust the lamp a little bit here for us. So that you can look in here, you can see the micro-channel expansion slots. You can see a token ring streamer. That is a dual auto LAN streamer, 32-bit micro-channel card. It's two token ring cards on one board, although one of the channels appears to be dead on it. The IBM XGA2 graphics card in all of its glory, an extremely capable card, and an early example of a fully programmable graphics processor. As long as you fell somewhere close to the limitations of the RAM deck on this video card, and the video memory of course, there wasn't a whole lot that it wouldn't do as long as you kept it fairly reasonable. What's down here is the processor complex, and this is the part that you should look carefully at. 
see if you can figure out what has been changed or enhanced about this to make it special. Give you a good look at it right there. I'm sure some of you can figure out what's been done here to hop this thing up a little bit more than the normal machine. This is a 399.1, yes, 0.1 watt power supply with features that are only starting to become common on a lot of more modern power supplies around the mid to early 2000s, around 2003 to 2006 or so. It has power factor correction circuitry, thermal fan control, and it's very impressive to look at that thing internally. There you can see the machine's security locking feature set. There's actually a locking switch that detects if the machine has been opened by unauthorized people and will force you to run the system programs or enter an access password. You can choose what happens. But there you have it. That's just a quick IBM PS2 related video, a preview of something that's to come in the future. I call this machine the all fast, all wide, all the time IBM PS2 and I'm sure some of you know why. But until next time, this is UXW Bill. Thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment if you've got one.